am I? Um, this is lesson number one on how to read music for your bass ukuleles. I did a taster tester lesson a few weeks ago just to get opinions on whether uh, folks were happy with me to try this method. Really positive feedback. So this is the official lesson one. Um, if you want to know why I'm going to use this book, Team Strings, it's a double bass book, go and watch my Taster Tester lesson because I explain a lot more in there. And if you've already done that Taster lesson, um, you might want to consider skipping forward to the note A because I'm going to cover what I did in that in a moment. You don't actually need this book because I will be putting the snippets that I'm covering on screen. However, I would highly recommend trying to get hold of it. I'll put links in the description below because as I explained before, um, if you've got the book, you've got, apart from having the physical copy, you can look back and forward. All right. So a really worth thinking about actually getting the book. And yes, this is a bass ukulele. Um, if your bass ukulele looks more like this, don't worry, they're exactly the same to play. Okay, I just fancied using my cheap eBay bass uke today. Right, so on to the lesson. Start with D. There you are, you can see the whole page there for a moment. Okay, so the first thing we've got to think about. We are starting with D. Which one of these strings is D? Again, I have covered the names of the notes on the bass ukes in my uh, beginner bass ukulele lessons, all right? Um, but if you're still not sure, if we go from the string furthest from our chin to start with, that's a G, then a D, then an A, then an E. Great. Danes are enormous. If you want to think of it from the opposite way, in other words, the string closest to our chin, E, A, D, G, evil, ants, dig, graves, whichever works for you. But the names of the strings are G, D, A, and E, and we are starting with our D. So the stave, in other words, those five lines. If we actually look at the beginning of it, we've got a strange symbol. That's called our bass clef. You normally find that at the beginning of music for lower pitched instruments, bass instruments, um, cello, tuba, that kind of thing. And then that strange four with a four on top. That's our time signature. We'll talk about a bit more about that in a moment. So the easiest way of remembering where our D is, okay? Mid, D, D, D line. If we look at the stave, we can count up one, two, and then you can see the note is sitting on the middle line, or we can count down one, two, and you'll see the note sitting on the middle line. So think of D as your mid, D, D, D line. The notes, I've got a little tail and a coloured in black, all right? And at the moment, we're only counting these, they're worth one beat, all right? In the UK, we know them as crotchets, and in the US, they're known as a quarter note, all right? I will try and cover uh, both sets of names, forgive me if I forget, okay? But in the Team Strings book, they do mention crotchet and quarter note as well. So each time we see one of those dots on the mid da 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 line, we're going to play a D on our bass ukes. This works for bass ukuleles, bass guitars, and of course, double bass. All right, bit like buy one, get one free. So each time we see a dot, we are going to pluck our D string, and remember you pluck the string towards you. You don't pluck it away from the bass, okay? Here we go. Try and follow me if you can. I'm gonna count for now, nice and slow. One, two, three, 
four. Okay, hopefully um, your right hand technique, you're just walking first finger, middle finger, first finger, middle finger, and you're plucking towards yourself to get a much nicer sound. Okay, let's try that one more time, a little bit faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Right, so that's crotchet or quarter notes and they're worth one beat. This time we're going to look at minims and they are worth two beats. In other words, we count to two each time. So a minim in the UK or a half note in the US. They look a little bit different. This time it's still a circle with a tail but they're not colored in black. You can actually see the line, our mid -da, da da line going through the middle of the note. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Now you might have noticed then I started off counting one, two, three, four for the first couple of bars or boxes. Again, we'll talk about that in a second. But for the last couple of bars, I counted just one, two, one, two, just to give you an idea that's how much we're counting a minim or a half note for. Now then, why was I counting one, two, three, four? Well, that's because the time signature, that four on top of the other four at the beginning of the music or the stave, that is telling us to count to four each time. All right. For quite a while, we're only going to be counting to four. So we might as well get used to it. All right. And you'll also notice there's a strange line going across the notes and it says, bar, bar one, bar two, and so on. We don't mean a gold bar or a chocolate bar, okay? We're dividing the music into bars to make it easier, and each bar or measure we count to four. Let's play this one, here we go. Again, I'm gonna count through it to start with. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, right, now then, we mixed and matched then. We had crotchets, the black notes of the tail, and we had minims, the white notes of the tail. So we had to count both times. All right, I'm gonna do that again. Hopefully this time now, you'll notice the different length notes. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, very logical all right it's letters and it's numbers counting and you don't have to count to very high numbers okay and now we're dividing the music up into these smaller chunks or bars or measures counting is much easier okay so we've got our monster rhythm now this looks a bit different because it's got arrows underneath and it says pulse clap or beat time now that's a bit difficult when you're actually playing um, what I would suggest, in a moment, I'm going to use my drum machine. Most of you are not going to have drum machines, but many of you have got phones or tablets. Download a metronome or a drum machine app for you to play along with. You might even have 
like an old fashioned metronome. It's just a tick tock, but it gives you a beat or a pulse to play along with. So let's play our rhythm. I'm gonna to count to start with, I'll count out loud. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 So I'm gonna play it again with my drum machine this time. Um, it almost puts you under pressure sometimes, okay? Get it so that you can play it, then try adding a beat. If the beat helps, great. If it's stressing you out, don't worry too much for now. And also, don't forget, this is a video. You can stop, you can rewind, you can play it again, okay? I'm doing a lot of information in this compared to what I might do in a class in school all right um but pause practice go back if need be so with the drums one two three four one I've done some drum backing tracks as well. So if you've got the book, which is what I am recommending, okay, you can put a drum backing track on and play along with that too. Right, on to A. Great Danes are enormous. So there's our A string or evil ants dig graves, okay? So it's the next string lower or towards your chin from your D string. Now if we look at our stave again, there's our bass clef sign and our time signature, 4-4, four, four, telling us to count to four each time. But you'll notice now the A is a bit lower. It's actually on the bottom space of our stave. And some of you might also notice this time the tail or the stem is pointing up. All right, for those interested, if a note is on the middle line, the tail can go up or down. If the note is above the middle line, the tails tend to go down. And if the note is below the middle line, the tails go up, all right? Just in case you needed to know that. Okay, so A, our bottom space note. You can notice we've got crotchets and minims, black notes and white notes, and we count in a four each time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, Okay, little bit faster. One, two, three, four. 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 Right, our next line has got something we haven't seen before. Can you see there's like a little squiggle in the middle? That means a rest. In other words, we don't play at that point. It's a crotchet rest or a quarter note rest. So in other words, it lasts for one beat and it means the bar still adds up to four. We've got three crotchet beats, three one beat notes and our crotchet rest. So there's still actually four beats in that bar. We just don't play where that crotchet rest is. 
What we've got to be careful of, we've actually got to stop the note ringing. So we've actually got to... And you can do that either by putting your right hand back on the uh, string to stop it ringing or and stop it ringing with your left hand. Either way will work, but you've got to stop it ringing, otherwise we don't get that rest. Let's try it, nice and slow. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, rest. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, rest little bit faster and I'm not going to count this time you need to sort of have an internal clock all right you can sort of tap your toe even count out loud at this point all right but you've got to have a way of keeping yourself in time or use a metronome a drum machine or an app here we go a bit faster one two three four Now rests are as important as notes. Sometimes even more important because if everybody's playing together and everybody's gonna to rest together, you don't want to be the only person putting a note in where there shouldn't be. So reading the bubble, bar lines divide a line of notes into sets. In four, four time, each bar adds up to four crotchet beats. We've already talked about this. That's our time signature, our 4-4, four, four, telling us to count to four each time. What they're showing here is just the fact that they're called bar lines, those vertical lines, and that's how we know when to divide the music up. Okay, so there's our bar lines and the fact that each bar, whether it's got rests or notes or a combination of both, have to add up. To four. Here we go. Don't forget, you've got to stop the note ringing for that rest. One, two, three, four. 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 And hopefully, you could hear the difference between the minims or the half notes, in other words, the notes that are worth two beats compared to the crotchets and the crotchet rests. And our monster rhythm for this page, here we go. Again, we've got the arrows to help us count. All right, we'll do it with a drum machine or a beat in a moment. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three, four. One, two, three, rest. One, two, three, four. 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 And counting along to yourself out loud will help, but so will this. So counting in, but I'm not counting along. Two, three, four. That's the A string for you. Right, so to finish off lesson one, we are now going to add the two notes together. So D and A together. So D is on the mid da 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 line, A is on the bottom space. We can see a squiggle or a crotchet rest because these are all crotchets in this line. And then there's this little block, like a little rectangle sitting on top 
of the line and that is telling us it's a minim rest or a half note rest. In other words, it's worth two beats. We have to count two beats for that rest rather than playing. And in fact, if we look where those rests are, there's a crotchet followed by a minim rest. There's three beats rest in that one bar and one note. So the bar still adds up to four. Okay, we've got plenty of time to move our fingers from our D string to our A string doing the rests. Let's have a little play. One, two, three, four. D, two, three, four. One, rest, rest, rest. A, two, three, four. One, rest, rest rest. So I moved from my D string to my A string and the rest in between loads of time. Let's play that one again a little bit faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, move my fingers across. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So our next line has got crotchets and minims. And you'll notice it's a minim rest. We've only got a two beat rest to move our fingers across in between the notes. Starting with D, one, two, three, four. 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 Okay, so we're playing the note. One, two, three, four, and stopping it ringing for that rest. Okay, no rests this time. D is on our mid da 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 line, and A, look ahead, all right? We've got four Ds, and then we've got to move our fingers straight across for our A string. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you might have noticed then I was actually stopping the strings ringing. So once I'd finished my D, I actually stopped the string ringing out and then played my A because otherwise we end up with okay and it all starts to build up a little bit. And the last of these little exercises, all right, so we've got quite a good mixture now of crotchets and minims or quarter notes and half notes. And then we've got our minim rests as well. Nice and slow. One, two, three, four. 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 Right, we'll do it a bit faster. Now, obviously I'm looking at you guys, all right? I've got the music here. Don't try and memorize it. The whole point of these lessons is to help you read music. It's just, I've literally done this uh, hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, and I'm used to watching the pupil, all right? So you should be reading the notes just like you'd read a book. Your eyes are moving along with the notes as you play them. Bit faster. One, two, three, four. 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 So technically our first named piece of music. Um, this one is called By the Rhine. Um, it actually fits with a very famous uh, piece of music, a German tune. If you have the book and you've got the CD that comes with the book, there is a backing track for this. Okay, so it might be worth you trying that and you can play along with the backing track as well. 
Okay, right, I'm gonna try and count along for the first time and then I won't count along. We might even try it with the drum machine as well. All right, so by the Rhine, which fits with German tune, there is a backing track if you've got the CD version of the book. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. Read in the next line. A, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Back onto D. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. And if you've just got through that, give yourselves a bit of a pat on the back because you've just read your first proper piece of music. Right, I'm going to play it again a little bit faster and this time I'm not going to count out loud. If you're playing along with this and you feel uh, the need to count out loud, please feel free to or tap your foot, whatever's going to keep you in time. One, two, three, four. How did you do? Right, I'm going to play it one more time with a beat, all right? But don't forget, if you've got the CD, have a go of playing it along with the backing track. So I'm going to count in. One, two, three, four. take in. Um, I quite often take three lessons to do that or certainly one lesson to look at D and then another lesson to look at A and add in D and A together but that's the beauty of videos. You can stop, rewind, pause, practice, stop, rewind, repeat and so on. So I'm hoping to get these how to read uh, bass music for your bass ukulele videos coming quite regularly. Look out for the next lesson. Lesson two is going to be the other two open strings, G and E, and adding them all together. You are, I do hope this has helped. As I said, you will find it easier if you actually own the book. Um, but hopefully you can at least follow along for now. Um, try eBay, Amazon, online music stores, all right, to get hold of it. It is worth it. I will put links below for the backing tracks, for the drums, um, and for the taster, tester lesson as well. And hopefully a couple of links where you can get hold of the Team Strings book. If you've got a comment or a question, please feel free, leave it below. Give us a like if you've enjoyed 
and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. Thank you for watching.